Hello, this is going to be a guide on how to get better colour settings for the BenQ XL 2411Z firmware version 2 monitor from BenQ. I'm not sure if I said BenQ already, but in this guide I'm going to go over how you can tell which firmware version your monitor has, which ICC profile to use, how to change digital, digital vibrance, what actual monitor colour settings you want, a custom resolution that would benefit you, and the Blur Buster's utility tool. But each one of those I'm going to explain in full in this tutorial, so I hope you enjoy. First things first, how to tell which firmware version your monitor is using. I just started recording on my camera. You go down here at the bottom, click the buttons. You want to press this button with the off button so while the monitor's off so turn the monitor off hold down that button press the power button let go monitor turns on you now want to press the button second from the right and that will bring up the service menu uh, the number you want to look at is firmware version so mine is V002, that means I'm on firmware version 2, if yours is V001, this guide will not work for you because the blur reduction utility tool won't work for you. But yeah. Alright, time to change ICC profiles. An ICC profile will change the colour of your desktop, it will make just colours better in general. The one I used was from digitalverses.com all that stuff you just put in ICC profile digital versus.com BenQ and it'll give you a list of the BenQ monitors and the ICC profiles they used I downloaded the XL 2411Z one but I didn't actually like it so I tried the XL 2420Z one which is it uses the same panel it just has more features so you can st still use this profile because they use the same panel so yeah just click that download it you can try the other one as well there's no harm in trying them this is all personal preference anyway um, once that's downloaded extract it to somewhere and then we'll go find it so to do that you need to right click your desktop click screen resolution right click the monitor you want to use an ICC profile on go to properties color management color management again firstly before you add it here this is probably blank before you add it you want to go to advanced change system defaults advanced again and tick this on this basically allows you to use an ICC profile when you set it as default otherwise it just won't work so you go to back to devices you click add browse you find like I dragged or I extracted mine into my downloads folder so you click the ICC profile you want <clears throat> you add it and when it's in this list click OK and it'll add it here and then if you've got say two different ones you, you can, can set as default did I even change the colour? yeah it is. it's changing the colour I don't know if that's going to pick up on my camera I'm, sure, I'm assuming that one did but these are all different ICC profiles and you just get the one you like the most and I found the one that I've linked in the description and the one I just downloaded the best so yeah that's the one I use and yeah once that's done click close bang that's an ICC profile and yeah next step is changing digital vibrance in the Nvidia control panel most people are aware of how to do this but if you're not right click desktop, go to NVIDIA control panel, adjust desktop colour settings, digital vibrance, put it all the way to full for this monitor anyway, like my other monitor I only have at 80% because it's already quite colourful but this monitor doesn't seem to be that colourful so yeah all the way to 100% that's digital vibrance right monitor colours uh, we want to bring up the menu, where's the menu button, there it is we don't want display. Firstly, you want to go into picture advance and change your mode from standard. I mean, from FPS 1 to standard. By default, it's on FPS 1. Standard allows you to use the gamma option, which I find more helpful than the dark something. 
basically in FPS one you get control over black equalizer which is there camera probably can't pick that up but I prefer to have control over gamma so these are my color options I have brightness set to 100 contrast at 40 low blue light at 10 it's your choice what you want this on this basically makes the blues less eye piercing and the whites are slightly creamy which I don't mind as long as my eyes aren't getting damaged blur reduction on otherwise blur utility doesn't work and it makes the monitor like the sun color temperature this is personal preference but these this is what I go for I just don't like the color blue I guess but 100 195 you can mess around with that all you want, just try and get settings you like. AMA on high. Premium is worse I find, and off is also worse. It's going to be kind of hard to explain, but basically with blur reduction on, you get a lot of ghosting. Okay, a quick explanation of AMA on the monitor. So I've gone on UFO, oh no, testufo.com which has these cheeky look looking UFOs and currently it's working at 120 FPS because I've enabled aero mode just in case you're trying to test this and you're only getting 60 FPS you need aero mode enabled what I'm going to show you is how AMA works so let's get close to one of them so you see there is a, a black or so little trail coming behind him coming off of him slightly like I can increase the speed of it but I think it's pretty obvious let me try 960 pixels it's gonna go faster but it's gonna be bigger as well so yeah there is a black trail behind him that is AMA on AMA premium will make it so that's more visible which you don't want basically that's what we're seeing now is ghosting you don't want ghosting at all so if that black thing wasn't there at all that would be great but on premium, it makes it even more obvious. Uh, I'm not even going to show that, it's quite hard to tell. But having it off means you just get the general ghosting effect. So I'll show that now. Like It might be harder to see, but in games it's more obvious. You can probably see there is a little trail behind it. This is really awkward to do, just moving my camera along. But yeah, you want AMA on high because of this reason. So I'll switch it back to high, and then we'll go through the settings again. AMA high, boom. Instant mode on. Sharpness, five. You can change that however you want. Five just seemed good enough. And gamma on five, because I find the blacks very grey on this monitor and even on Gamma 5 the blacks are still very grey but I think it's just the best Gamma level. So yeah that sums up the monitor settings, once you've done that you can go and save them if you want, save settings to different Gamma versions, Gamma 1, Gamma 2, Gamma 3, yeah. So yeah, those are the colour settings. Right now we're going to make a custom resolution that we're going to use just for everything. So. NVIDIA control panel, if you've got AMD it's going to be a different method of doing it and I can't explain that because I don't have an AMD card. The reason we're doing this is so you get increased brightness in general so you can have less uh, or a more clear image because you can fiddle around with the BenQ utility tool and you have like more room to work with because your screen's going to be brighter. Um, so you customize, you create a custom resolution 920, 1080. Obviously, you want to have your desktop resolution. And as this is a guide for this monitor, you're going to be using 1920 by 1080. Unless you're weird and you don't use a native resolution. Hmm? Change the refresh to 120. You change this to manual. And you change this little value here to 1502. There is an example of it. Oh, actually, refresh rate. No, you change it up there, I'm pretty sure but make sure it's 120 on both of these. I just burped. Uh, change this to 1502, it will make the screen brighter. Um, and that's about it. So once that's done, click test. 
or whatever, and you're done. There is another version of doing of having 1350 here, which is where I first saw the guide of doing the vertical 1350 tweak on Blur Busters. I think that was what it was called. But someone else who I'll link below found a way of getting this to 1502, and only good things can come from it really so yeah 1502 test I've already got this one so yeah done click it apply do you want to save changes yes now your monitor is going to be 120 Hertz and a lot brighter and the difference between 120 and 144 Hertz is very minimal and you have to to get a solid 144 FPS in a game is fairly difficult and yeah there won't be much of a difference. Alright, now we need to go get the Blur Reduction Utility Tool. So, open Chrome, Blur Reduction Utility, I'm not going to do spelling right at all. Oh, look at that, don't need to spell at all. Uh, top one, yeah! Right, download button, click download, pow! It's downloaded, install it, whatever, once it's in the menu, but once it's installed, open it. Done. Now I'm going to start recording on my camera to show you the different settings in here. So, more to the left, the clearer the motion, but the darker the monitor. More to the right, the brighter the screen, but the less clear the motion. You don't want this over 1.5 because I think you start to notice um, slight errors in the image, or just like the image in front of your image. Just you don't want that. So I have mine around like 1.2 mark, I'd say, and you just want this crosstalk all the way to the left. Like fiddle around with different strobe phases, but all the way to the left seems to work fine and that's what they say on the forums as well um, you don't need to save this because it, what this is actually doing oh, I just if you oh that is the wrong button if you bring up the service menu oh, we did that before uh, it's not coming up now so let me just bring it up quick service menu Okay, service menu is up. It's these but these numbers at the bottom change to I think they change not change it. Well they change depending on what options you've got. Um let me see. Yeah. So strobe duty just changed because I changed persistence. Let's see if changing the crosstalk We'll change the one below it. Which button was it? That one. Yes. So, what I like is having that on zero, that about there, which comes out as seven and zero? Yeah. So, yeah. So, you don't need to save the settings because it's already changing them on the actual monitor. So, there you go, there's how to use the BenQ Blur Reduction Utility. Okay, that pretty much sums up the guide. I couldn't have done this without the Blur Busters forum. Um, I haven't actually posted on there, it's just everything that I looked for when looking for colour settings and stuff with this monitor came directly to the Blur Busters website because people are always posting on the forums and there are a lot of smart people on there. And where did that even go? Uh, UFO test is something they use and yeah this is a little tool that I've been using to test my monitor as well which has been really handy all the links I used and stuff will be included in this description below and I've kind of just like put my spin on the guides they've given so I've just put it all in one guide and yeah put my own color settings so I hope you enjoyed it and goodbye